back to Children's Church and Happy New Year. I told you last week that this week would be a new year and it is. <laughs> Are you excited? So today our ponder point is God inspires worship. And the Bible passages that we can find this in are 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13, chapter 17, verses 34 through 51, and 2 Samuel chapter 6 and 7. So it's really hard to believe that it's a new year, right? Are you excited about this new year? I'm excited to see what God is going to do in this year. And I'm listening and I'm watching and I'm expecting to see what he's going to do. And I'm going to keep close to him and I'm going to continue to read his word because I don't want to miss anything. So I would challenge you. Uh, that's a part of what we're going to be talking about today, how God inspires worship and how we live our lives. That is worship, right? It's not just about singing a song. So I have a quick game of what would you do? I know that I won't be able to hear your answers, but I'm going to put up some of my answers so that you can see what I would do. So here we go. Here's the first question. What would you do if someone put a huge slice of delicious cake in front of you? All right. So I found this adorable picture. So would you do this? <laughs> You'd go for it, right? That's adorable. Here's my second question. What would you do if someone took you to a beautiful beach? Now, I know what I would do because I grew up for a period of my life uh, very close to a beach. And we used to hang out there a lot. And they used to make some pretty cool uh, sand castles and all of that kind of stuff. So I found a really nice picture that kind of reminds me of what I used to do when I was a kid. And uh, as you can see, there's sand and there's uh, shells and starfish and all of that kind of stuff. And we used to collect them and we used to build really awesome things. And this next question, I love, I love, love this next question. What would you do if somebody told you a really funny joke? Would you laugh? Well, this guy's laughing. I love this picture. He is so adorable. And uh, so I pictured that's what maybe you would look like if somebody told you a really, really funny joke. So different things inspire us to act in different ways. One last question, and this is really the important question of the day. How do you worship God? Hmm. So I have some pictures here of what I believe are ways that we can worship God. And so you can see this picture is pretty familiar if you've ever been in children's church. Uh, these are kids that are worshiping uh, in song. They're raising their hands in excitement. And so worshiping in song is one way. And then we have a little girl right here. She's got her Bible. That's another way of worshiping God is by reading God's word. And then we have a picture of a child over here that is praying. And it looks like maybe in an open field. And you know what? We can pray to God anywhere. We don't have to be at the foot of our bed. You know, when we want to pray, we can just drop and pray or we can stand and pray. And so this is what I believe worship is. Worship is how we live our lives before God. And it's praising him like this picture up here. It's praying to him. It's reading his word. And really, it's how we live our life every single day before him. How we respond and react to situations. So all of those things are all about worship. Well, I want to tell you about uh, somebody that we are a little bit familiar with because we've talked about him a lot in the last couple of months and his name is King David and he worshiped God in many different ways. He loved the Lord. And God chose King David to lead God's people, the Israelites, if you remember. And when God chose David, if you recall, he was the youngest son in a big family and a shepherd. But God looked at David's heart God called David a man after my own heart. And that's found in Acts 13, 22. And God knew that David would worship and serve him wholeheartedly. That means that every part of him was worshiping God. You know what? That's how we should worship God too. With our whole hearts, with our minds, with our bodies, whatever we do, wherever we go. So I wonder how many 
of you have read or heard of the book of Psalms. Now, I'm not talking about songs, but I'm talking about P-S-A-L-M-S, Psalms. And that's a that's one of my favorite places to hang out in the Word. I am usually uh, read uh, Psalms uh, every single day along with something else in God's Word, and I find it to be very encouraging to me. But did you know that the word Psalms means song? Yeah, for real. The Holy Spirit empowered King David to write many of the songs in the book of Psalms. (laughs) David worshiped God with songs, and so can we. Mm -hmm. King David did not just worship God when he was full of joy. He also praised God when he was sick, when his enemies were after him, and when he was afraid. How do we know this? Well, we know this because the, his Psalms talk about how when he was feeling sick and when he was sad and when he was scared. And you can find a lot of these in Psalm 41, verse 3, uh, chapter 56, verses 3 and 4. These Psalms um, worship God for who he is, even though David was facing difficulties. The Holy Spirit inspired David to worship God no matter what was happening. And that's really awesome. And hopefully that's the place that we already are at or or will come to, that realization of how important that is. We need to be like David and worship God in the good and bad and the in-between times. David went through some scary and uncomfortable situations, but each time he relied on God. And before David became king, God helped him fight a lion and a bear. Do you remember that? With his bare hands. God also gave David victory over that giant, Goliath. Remember that? And after David became king, God helped him and his men to win battle after battle against the enemies of God's people. When we rely on God to help us with all of our difficulties, we worship him with our attitudes and actions. How, you wonder? Relying on God shows that we believe that he is powerful and wise enough to help us and so loving that he wants to help us. God did something else for his people through David. God gave the Ark of the Covenant back to them. Do you remember what the Ark of the Covenant is and why it's so important? If you remember some of the kids that were in live children's church a few weeks ago, we actually made a model of the temple and the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant was incredibly important because through the Ark of the Covenant, God's presence dwelled amongst his people. But the Ark of the Covenant had been taken away from God's people for many years. King David was determined to bring the Ark to Jerusalem, the new capital city of Israel. And as David and his men walked uh, with the Ark towards Jerusalem, David was filled with joy. He could not keep his joy inside. David worshiped God without thinking about people, what people would say or what they would think. Imagine dancing and singing in front of the whole country like David did. He was not afraid because he was giving all of the honor and the glory to God. King David was so inspired by God's presence that he couldn't stop himself from praising God. Hallelujah is a word that means praise God. Maybe you have heard something uh, or someone say that that word out loud in church while worshiping. I know that I have, and I know that I've actually said it out loud during worship time. After the ark was in Jerusalem, King David wanted to build a beautiful temple for the ark. But God told David that he was not the person to build the temple. This must have made David really sad. But David obeyed God and he didn't build the temple as he wanted to. Did you know that obeying God is actually a way to worship him? Respectfully obeying your parents is a way to worship God. Not taking things that don't belong to you because they belong to others is a way to worship God. All of those things are ways to worship and honor God. After God told David that he could not build the temple. God gave David a very special promise. 
Your kingdom will endure forever. Before me, your throne will be established forever. And that's found in 2 Samuel 7, 16. God was promising that the Messiah, the ultimate king of Israel, would be born from David's family. You know who that was, right? We just celebrated last week, Christmas, Jesus. He comes from the line of David. That's awesome. So David prayed to God, Who am I, sovereign Lord? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? How great you are, sovereign Lord. There is no one like you, and there is no God but you. And that's the absolute truth. God keeps his promises. And as I mentioned before, Jesus was from David's family. When he came as a baby on Christmas, he was a king, but he was not worshipped during that time. Someday he will come back and everyone will worship him. That is God's promise and it will come true. Since everyone will someday worship Jesus, let's get a head start today. Let's worship Jesus with our whole hearts, just as David did, and just as the Holy Spirit empowered David to worship. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to empower each one of us to worship God as well. I don't know about you, but that's exciting to me, and especially as we enter into a new year. I think it's an especially important thing for us to really fully understand and to do. So we don't just want to think about it. We want to follow through and do it. So let's pray and ask the Lord to help us to worship him, to bring glory and honor to his name today in all of this new coming year, okay? Father, I thank you and I praise you for this amazing lesson. Lord God, I just ask that you would help us to fully understand what it means to worship you. And worshiping is not just about singing. Worship is how we live our lives before you, Lord. And so, Father, I ask that you would help us to do just that. Live our lives before you to bring glory and honor to your holy name.